Corey Eisberg, welcome to the show. Here we are. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Tell me about St. MLA and working with Toby Mac on that remix track. Yeah, it was epic. I, uh, I never thought that I would see the day in my younger years that Toby Mac would text me. And <laughs> that I got a text from a random Nashville number and I was like, what is happening? Started reading it and said, hey, this is Toby Mac. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool, man. Uh, so he was asking me to do the song. I just like freaked out. Like, this is killer. I don't care what song it is, I'm singing it. So. That's awesome. Yep. So when you got the track, was it uh, was it basically done? It just needed like your voiceover? You got yeah. to interpret what you wanted to do with your voice? Yeah, yeah, the track was pretty much there. Yeah. Um, it just needed a lot of singing. Yeah. So I did like a hundred takes. Did you really? Everything, uh, a bunch of crazy ad libs that yeah. you know we probably never even used to be honest with you. How did you choose between the ones that got sent back? I didn't. You we did, just we just literally just sent, sent everything. Yeah, we That's sent amazing. like a gigantic file and just said, "Here you go, do what you do with it." And uh, they did. I never even got to have any say in it. <laughs> but it turned out great. So yeah, you like the way it turned out. Yeah, it's great. I do too. Man, we were talking about his lower register on that track and how you were feeling under the yeah, water. When you, yeah, man. It's probably you a lucky to thing the though. Depths way and that yeah, because norm normally I can't sing that low, so maybe it was a good thing that I was sick that day. Because I had been off of social media for a year. A year, yes. And the worst part about that was, it's my favorite part, when you said, I'm signing off at, was it midnight or yeah. something? Yeah. And uh, like at 11.59 before you signed off, somebody said, no, Corey, you <laughs> just got a puppy. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, I, I did feel bad about taking the pup away from the boat. Sure. <laughs> that, was the most, that, that was the most difficult part of uh, that year off. So you did a Reckless Love remake, and yep. how did Tori Kelly get on the track? <sighs> Luckily, that's how she got on. Um, no, yeah. she's... She's like a hero of mine vocally. I think she's the greatest female singer of this generation, honestly. Wow. You know, I'm not talking about the Whitney's and the, mm -hmm. and the Mariah's. Yeah. I'm talking about right now. Um, it was just, I had always really admired her, always really appreciated, obviously, her voice mm -hmm. and her gift. So it is a little ironic, though, that you came back to the song, that you sort of walked away, yeah. you know, yeah. like you dropped the mic and just walked off the stage yeah. for a year. And Honestly, then you came back with it. Yeah, the, the reason, you know, is fairly strategic, um, even though I don't like being strategic with industry stuff, you know, I just want to do what comes out of the heart, right? Yeah. Um, but I wrote a book. Um, yes. It was like a 40 day devotional that was also called Reckless Love. It's kind of based on a lot of the themes and stories, um, you know, how the song came about, basically. I yeah. love the art on that, by the way. It looked like yeah. somebody wrote Reckless Love yeah, with a Sharpie me. and then just, just like swiped Smeared it. Smeared it, yeah. It was very cool. That's awesome. Yeah, so it was just like, how do we bring focus back to this and attention back to this, even though I've been gone for, you know, however yeah. long? And we were like, what if we just kind of reimagined Reckless Love, like with someone awesome? So we just started throwing out names, me and a couple of my buddies and my wife, one night, and we were like, Justin Bieber, and I was like, ah. but, <laughs> but he's incredible. And we were like, who, who would fit the song? And someone threw out like Amy Grant, you know, some of these heroes that we've had throughout, yeah, yeah. throughout the years. And then my wife actually said, Tori Kelly. And I was like, oh, dude, that would be amazing. Like, that, how fun would that be to sing with Tori, number one? Yeah. I had been, I wouldn't even say friends, with her husband and her, honestly. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually just hit him up. I was like, bro. Like, <laughs> I have a thought. Yeah, like, I got a thought. Would, would your wife want to sing on this? Because the, the reason that we got in touch in the first place was he was like, dude, Tori and I love this song. It's wrecked Aww. us, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's meant so much to our relationship, et cetera, et cetera. So I was like, let's see. Like, yeah. who knows? Maybe, yeah. maybe they'll be down. And he was like, bro, absolutely. I just let it go from there. Kind of Bethel music took over, but it's just 
up late one night brainstorming on who would be fun to sing with. And oh my gosh, it's huge. I, I really, I love that we uh, get requests for that all the time. It, oh, just, um, it just has a nuance to it that doesn't take away from the original. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And they, they live in two separate spaces together. I feel yeah. like it really was the right choice. Yeah. Excellent well, work. Love it. Okay, let's talk about your new music. Yes. Your new music. New music. Woo! <laughs> so you came back after this hiatus, but what made you say, okay, now's yeah. the time to collect these songs together yeah. and make it a record? Especially in the world of EPs. Like, yeah. I feel like right now people are I just hate like. EPs. I really do. Really? Why? You can tell everyone I hate EPs. <laughs> because I grew up, and I'm sure you did as well, in the era where you put on a record and you listened you all the way through. Let it go. Mm -hmm. You didn't skip. You didn't. Uh, oh, you know this one song, and the rest of them are trash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I That's just true. it drives me nuts. I want to put on a record. I want it to have a sonic identity. I want it to have uh, thematic elements that flow throughout. Because a record to me is it's a piece of art, yes. you know, and mm -hmm. it, and it should be consumed that way. But unfortunately, I think. Our culture has shifted so much that we like these little bite-sized yeah. things. We're like a McDonald's culture that just wants mm -hmm. quick and easy, or oh, get in and get out. Yeah. And I'm like, man, sit with the music. Yeah. Like, enjoy the music. Hear what the artist is trying to tell you uh, through the sound and the lyric. Yeah. Like, that's, there's just something beautiful to that to me. And so every time that I've endeavored to make music. It's always been a, a collective body of work, at least mm -hmm. in, in my head. People yeah. might go, oh, that was all random. <laughs> but in my head, like, it all goes together. Mm -hmm. And it's got, um, you know, a central theme and everything sort of works around that. And then, like I said earlier, like, you get a producer that creates this sort of sonic identity. Um, you know, like I think of John Mayer has this one record. Mm -hmm. um, Born and Raised, maybe, or Paradise Valley, one of those. You put that record on, and it sounds different than everything else. They were so intentional with the way they EQ'd it and mixed it and mastered it that it's like you could hear three notes out of that record. And for me, I'm like, I know exactly what that is. Yeah. Like, that's so cool to me because that's artistry, that's mm -hmm. expression. And uh, that's why I hate EPs because I think it should be beautiful and thoughtful and intentional, not just like, hey, I got three songs, here you go. Yeah, I you can't know? wait to get them out, so just That's get just yeah. my personal opinion. Yes. Which is the best opinion. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about short stories? Maybe you throw those out as well. No, right? no, I'm down Newspapers. with a short story. And I'm happy with those. <laughs> but it's like, I want it to be a full holistic picture of what you were feeling yeah. when you created that. And to me, like... I think it can kind of happen in an EP, but I think a lot of times, like you said, it's just people like, I got to get this out. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. That's it my does, rant. It does take, it does take, I mean, uh, the process of getting out a full length record is, is definitely hard to wait for. Yeah. You know, definitely mm -hmm. hard to wait for. Mm -hmm. And then especially when you have fans that listen to it and they're like, what's next? And yeah. you're like, what? <laughs> wait. Sure. Yeah. Because <laughs> they are consuming it. Like maybe even they've been trained to consume in sort of this mm -hmm. bite sized mentality. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. when we used to just, like you said, live with that record and live mm -hmm. with it and live with it. Yep. So when did you know you had a full record and were ready? To yeah, man. I mean, when we took the year off in 2019, I wasn't writing anything at the beginning of that year. It's, it's kind of like I was just completely like poured out, it yeah. felt like. Yeah. And I needed to just fill up again, get inspired and get fired up about yeah. life and God and, you know, people and everything. And it took me a bit to get to a place where I was like, okay, I can start writing again. You know, I'm inspired enough. I'm, I'm quote unquote, my cup is overflowing enough mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it's time. And I, I genuinely didn't start writing until like June of 2019. And then when I did it felt like the floodgates opened really? and there was so much that I was processing post reckless love. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, that was kind of an overnight success of sorts, even though my life had taken a long time to get there. Mm -hmm. You know, like a lot of people go, who's this new artist, Corey yeah, Asbury. Right, right, right. And I'm like, they don't know the backstory. And I don't want to be arrogant. Like, Oh, I've been doing this forever. Cause that's, <laughs> that's not like the heart. Right. But, mm -hmm it takes a long time to arrive at reckless love. And I think for a lot of people it was like, Oh, it was an overnight success. Like he's a, he's a new guy. Um, but there was a lot that 
that took to get to that place. So I was kind of like reeling in a sense afterward yeah. um, from all the attention and people want me to do this and that and whatever. And just the fight of it all. Yeah, yeah exactly. sure. Mm -hmm. I was genuinely worn out, um, just tired. Yeah. And my soul was tired. So I didn't start writing until June. And when I did, it was like I had time to process mm -hmm. everything that I was feeling. And honestly, like there's one song in the record to love a fool that's called unraveling and it's not like a popular song it's not like a radio single mm -hmm, or yeah. anything it's a deep track yeah it's definitely a deep cut for sure um but it encapsulates sort of what i was experiencing in that time off where you know, i was trying to get my bearings back and going like i was more worn out than i thought wow. and i need god to fill me back up again um because people take it out of you yeah. and, and it's beautiful and it's it's ministry it's you know mm. absolutely what God intended but you don't realize how much energy it takes to carry people yeah. and I felt like I was carrying people everyone telling me bro your song blah 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 saved my life mm. it's an incredible experience to go thank you for yeah. saying that yeah. or I was about to commit suicide and I listened to your song but it's also a really weighty burden mm. to carry those people for me on my back because it's like I genuinely care about people mm -hmm. and when they tell me that like I it's some part of my empathetic mm -hmm. self like resonates with that and just holds on to it mm -hmm. so it's almost like I had to let all that go wow. and just go like bye everybody like I'm yeah. going back to just me and God yeah. and my family yeah it was, it was a really beautiful time um, but once I started writing again so much flowed so much it was just yeah. there and i was like oh okay mm. cool that was in there that i was stewing on so it was, it was really fun yeah it was very good on the flip side to have you back yeah you know, it's awesome it is it really really is and it's a good work and i'm glad that you were able to put pen to paper put lips to mic yep. hopefully so, not yeah. too close <laughs>